an hour of your time. Uninterrupted, I might add. True, true. So we're making all these crazy videos, Julian. Right. We're talking to so many people, and it's just so much damn fun. We've been interviewing all these students at the college about their entrepreneurial adventures. Really thrilling for me to see such beauty all around. Oh, not only in instruction, but in administration and with the students who are there learning. Really thrilling. Right. As a result of a class that I'm taking at Metro, I think I've told you about this before when mm -hmm. we talked about the interview, I had the opportunity to take on a different type of project which allows me to talk to the subject of gender and all of the challenges that our society has with judgment. Let's face it, just judgment. All around? Yeah. All around judgment. Totally. So I thought who better to talk to than someone who is near and dear to me. Right. Uh, to get some really um, authentic uh, answers to some questions. I mean, questions that I have as a, what I would consider myself based upon what I've learned in class is a straight ally. For sure. And I like that term very much, you know, to be aligned and allied with people who that we love, regardless of <clears throat> gender, you know, sexuality, religion, race, creed, color, all of those types of things. Gotcha. So I thought that I would ask you today about your journey. Just in general as far as sexuality or? Your, your journey in, in life, sexuality also, but your journey, for example, um, there are a lot of different ways that one can look at gender and they can look at the, the biology of, of the human animal, you know? So there are different um, studies and, and different theories out there about it's biological, it's emotional. If you talk to some real conservatives, they say it's something that you choose and you don't need to choose that and it's against every possible religion and you're damn well going to go straight to hell. And then there are people who don't believe that at all. They believe that, like in many Indian cultures, those that had a balance between the male and female were actually considered an elevated position in their tribes. Like old school Native American kind of mm -hmm. philosophy. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I definitely think, like you say, you know, my journey through life has been, you know, I definitely was, definitely think you know at a young age, you know, what your sexual preference is. I never had a problem gender-wise as like, you know, getting along more one way with like female or male. I had friends equally on both sides, you know what I mean? And I never think I was too judgmental as far as, uh, like I was never a real clicky person as far as I only got along with like one group of people because I got along with everybody from like the jocks to like punk kids to gay kids to artsy kids and I kind of always liked kind of having a piece of everybody because I didn't like to just be with one group of people because I found that to be kind of boring when you only have like one kind of friends or you're only friends with guys or only with girls you're kind of like cutting yourself short you know what I mean wow. in life so I feel like if you kind of get a little bit of everything which is kind of you know me, kind of spread myself too thin sometimes. I kind of have, I think it's a little more fun that way too. So, um, yeah, and as far as, you know, gender maybe battles growing up or sexuality barriers, I mean, I think maybe the toughest time you experience might be in middle school or when you're kind of in those formative years where you're kind of going through puberty and kind of figuring out who you are and maybe you don't know that you're gay necessarily, especially as a guy, because you kind of find yourself a little bit later than I think a lot of girls do, but you go through that kind of like, you, you you like girls, I had tons of girlfriends, as you know, growing up, but maybe tons know that you also kind of are attracted to your guy friends, or maybe do stuff with your guy friends growing up, and you're like, okay, this is like normal, but I'm dating a girl, and so you kind of, I kind of found myself pretty early in life, I think I came out when I was a senior, so I was 15 or 16 years old, and luckily, obviously, you're my mom, and you know, the boys were really cool, and coming from such a big family, I was lucky that I had such an open family, and so it wasn't... For me, I didn't come out right away when I knew I was kind of waiting for the right moment and then it kind of just happened on my birthday that year at the movie theater <laughs> when Christian asked me what I say when people ask me if I'm gay or bi at, you know, clubs that have both people there and then I kind of just 
popped it out. So, <laughs> but I mean, that was kind of the most difficult thing was just kind of like getting it out there and just telling you guys. But once it was out there, it was kind of like, you know, the, all the boys were cool, you were cool, and I've never felt uncomfortable bringing a boy home or, you know, I don't, whenever I've had, since I've been dating guys, which is almost 12 years now, I've never had to hide who I was around you. It's never been a, a weird thing for me, you know what I mean? And I think it's been that way, likewise, with both my brothers who are also, who are, who are both straight, but who are also commonly thought of as gay sometimes or confused as gay because they had an older brother that was gay, so they're very well put together. <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely don't think my struggle has been what a lot of my friends or what a lot of people I've heard stories from in the gay community working at gay bars. I mean, some of them don't even talk to their families or they've had the hardest time just because they haven't had such a cool and supportive family like I was very fortunate to have, so. Well, what happens uh, to people who have that type of frustration? I mean, in class, we've talked about young people actually being so ostracized that they're not even welcome in their own homes. What, what do you do, if you think, based upon your experience with all, all right. these people, what have people done to solve that problem of, okay, I've come out, I've, I'm saying that I'm going to take this direction in life, and like it or not, this is who I am, and they're met with such hostility and resentment. What, what do people do? Well, I think it's different for everybody, but I mean, it's, it's definitely different for people that, like you said, are ostracized or have a hard time coming out. For me, like, when I came out, it wasn't like a big change. I mean, I think we all go through, when you first come out, you kind of feel that sense of like, oh, I finally found, the, I finally, oh my gosh, this is who I am, you know what I mean? Like, I can be comfortable and like date who I want, and you get that kind of feeling. You kind of, you know, joke around, so like, you know, when you first come out, everyone's super gay, like, super gay, quote unquote, the first couple of years you come out because you just go off the deep end because you're just so excited to be out and like be with the gays and like, have all these other people that are kind of the same way you are and not have to feel like in that kind of, like you're the outcast maybe. But for me, I feel like being gay was never who I was and didn't define me. It was who I was attracted to or who I was sleeping with. You know what I mean? That doesn't define you as a person. Like just like if you're straight, just because you are a straight guy that's having sex with a woman, that's not all you are. You have all these other characteristics. Like maybe you like sports, maybe you like art, maybe you like movies. Like that defines you as a person or all your, whatever you like to do. Um, as a whole, a religion, or I mean, just, you know, whatever the case may be, and I think a lot of people that, I definitely have friends that, to this day, I mean, my most recent love of my life, you know, life, whatever, he just recently came out to his family with me more recently, and that was, you know, later in life, whereas I came out younger, so everyone has their own different journey, and I think everyone's families look at things differently, but like you said, different people find more of a sense of family and community, and maybe that's why there's so much more of that sense of being gay as who they are, and why they are more involved in like, you know, for example, the LGBT Center or Matthew Shepard Foundation, things like that, and why they go out and do things to help. Because for a lot of gays, there isn't a sense of family within their own family. So the gay community becomes their family, you know? Whereas that for me, the gay family, I have my gay friends and family who are definitely welcome with my family also, but my family has always been my family too, mm -hmm. so. Setting constantly. Uh, I mean, I can't, I can't really, well, I guess we can, all relate to it in a way in that we all modify our behavior based upon the settings that we're in but at least I never have to worry about having that type of additional level Pressure. of concern like okay where am I you know can I be myself can I not right uh, or maybe it's just my age because at this point it's kind of like well I, I'm gonna be myself whether or not most people like it or not I just I just am gonna have to just be myself and be authentic. I think I've been that since I was about 15 years old yes, so I've never I know, really <laughs> Really but, had to break out of that habit. But not but, uh, for a lot of people. Definitely. You know, a lot of people have a very, very tough time with it. So the kind of pressure, especially on young people and bullying. So if you if you were to give, I don't know, a recommendation to young people who are feeling like they are being bullied and maybe they don't have the support at home. Right. What, what types of things would you tell a young person? Well, maybe I think I would have to say even coming from a good home, like a very supportive family background. I mean, bullying is bullying regardless, and you don't go home. I mean, I was bullied a little bit as a kid for maybe a good three years there. It was just a struggle. So I would just say to most kids, you know, bullying is bullying no matter where you're from. Like I was telling you, you know, obviously, you know, we were born in California, and coming from the Bay Area, it wasn't uncommon to see two guys holding hands coming down the street. But then moving from San Francisco, you know, Berkeley, Oakland area to coming down to Thornton, Colorado, a place I'd never heard of, and 
seeing, not seeing snow for the first time, because obviously Lake Tahoe, but being in a definitely more suburban environment and non-private school to public schooling and just the complete difference in the system and the way that people acted in a much smaller town and less culture, not less culture, but less diversity as far as people from all over the world, you know what I mean? At Montessori in California, you have people from South America, from Europe, everywhere, and it was like coming to a very more kitschy kind of area where it was like, this is what's trendy, this is what's not, and it's like having to adapt to that, being the oldest kid, you know, the boys probably had a little bit of an easier time too, just kind of so young, you kind of were molded a little bit, but I kind of already had a sense of who I was, and going through like maybe middle school was probably the only time that I really felt that a really tough a really tough time with bullying and I think the best piece of advice that I could give anybody um, going through something similar to that is just stay strong and even to this day some of the people that were the harshest on me and treated me the worst at those you know years of my life are the people that became friends with me in high school and some two of them became two of my best friends which is the weirdest thing and a lot of times it's just insecurity on others people's part most times when people are mean to you about something it's because of something they're uncomfortable with and they're insecure about should half the guys I know that were insecure about gays are gay themselves now, you know what I mean? So it's kind of funny to see how people change, you know, but um, I would say just stay strong because, you know, I got through those years and then high school just kind of focused on being me and just definitely stuck true to my guts as to who I knew, as to who I knew how to be who I was. And, you know, by junior, senior year, I think I was just like completely fulfilled and I, you know, grew up into the man I was and had opportunity knocking at my door doorstep in many different areas to the point where I had all those people that were kind of rude to me when I was younger wanting to be my best friend and surrounded by beautiful people and just amazing everything by the time I was like 16. So just get through those years. I mean, half of that is just being emotional because you're going through so much at that age yourself. You right. know what I mean? So right. whether you're being bullied for that, there's a kid that's out there getting bullied for being too smart or bullied for being, you know, any any reason it wouldn't matter if it's gay or being smart or just maybe you don't necessarily look you're not the hot kid when you're like 12 years old and then those like the ugly duckling syndrome those kids to grow up to be supermodels so don't get down on yourself for being you know ostracized when you're a little kid basically i guess the the one thing too that i i thought i would ask before i say you know so long for this say for this particular interview because i plan on you know following you around uh, as well, you're, as you're I, stuck with me for like as, as long as I'm going to document, like document uh, <laughs> journalistically exactly. this, this pursuit. Yeah. But I think that if there was a, a, a word of wisdom that you would impart to our viewing audience from your perspective at your age, your, your outlook on life, about economics and where you see our country. There's a lot of criticism about our current president. There's all this class warfare and right. social structures that are being uh, challenged. But how does a person of your age look at the challenges that our country faces ahead in terms of economics? I don't know. You know, I've been um, I've been very fortunate. I've been able to I really never had to worry, I'd say, on a day-to-day -day basis about much growing up, and then I went from having everything kind of not just handed to me, but I was definitely had a lot of support and help financially and otherwise. I've never had a hard time making money, and I think that a lot of people focus on the negative of this current situation, and a lot of people do blame Obama, but a lot of people also fail to admit or, you know, take into account that he did bring us back from such a horrible situation before. You know what I mean? And he has done so much for our country. So, you know, you have a lot of people that are very right wing that are going to look at him and say, hey, this is kind of, it's this president causing all these problems, but you can't throw someone into office with the previous situation being the way it was and expect everything to turn around overnight. So I think the way I look at things is, you know, you're, there, you're always going to have people that are going to be pessimistic and want to look at the negative about the future, the country, the world. But you're not going to get anywhere thinking like that. So the way I look at it is I just refuse to even think about us facing this huge breakdown and this huge negative, you know, event happening, so to speak. I think that, you know, I just stay positive and like live each day for what it is and just I'm happy for it and just keep, you know, making sure that I'm taking care of myself, my money, my future and my, the people closest to me in hopes that, you know, I will live a happy life and that everything will be good. You know right, what I mean? Right.
just well, not looking bad about it. Focus, focus on the it. way you want things to turn out rather than focusing on how you don't want things to turn out. I think that's a pretty good way. You know, people that are always going to complain about money, they're never going to have any. It's like, you know, I never really stress out about certain things and those things never seem to be a problem for me because it's kind of like you're just like, what are you, it's like the secret, you know, you ask for things in the universe, you put out there what you want to get back and you get it back. It's common sense and that's kind of how I feel like my life for the most part works out. It's when I get really down in the dumps in, in my life, those periods of time like we all do, where things continue to go bad. You have to pull yourself out of that yourself and it's not going to take you blaming a president or blaming someone else. You have to kind of take charge of your own life and make that happen for you. That's so, very true. That's what that I was saying. That's very true. I, I totally agree. Well, thanks so much for stopping by today. For sure. I, I love should we, to... Should we shake hands now? Or how? <laughs> <laughs> I love to have the time to spend and chat, and I'll let you know when our when our video footage cool. is ready to go live. Definitely did. All right. All right. All right. I'm 36 years old. I grew up in um, southwest Denver, pretty close to Lakewood. Um, I've also lived in Seattle, Washington, uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and um, I'm a web designer, graphic designer. I do video editing, and um, I would like to think I'm an artist. I play drum. One of the areas that I have become most recently interested in due to an assignment that I got in a gender communications course at Metropolitan State is this concept of uh, gender, gender-based issues. You know, they're, it's fiery, isn't it? Mm, yes. It is controversial. And in order there to... There are a lot of do's and don'ts. Lots of do's and don'ts. Well, we think there's a lot, but in our own uh, basic heterosexual society, we already have a pretty good idea of what the do's and don'ts are. So it doesn't seem like this big thing that we have to learn. We're conditioned ever since we're little. The decision, for some of us, <laughs> was actually to just be ourselves and um, be in alignment with ourselves. Um, whatever that looks like. I've chosen to have a monogamous relationship with a woman and do all of the things that um, a heterosexual couple would do in the way of like you know, creating children or whatever we choose to do. So it's it's a journey. <laughs> I sometimes envy the people that it was a little more cut and dry for. <laughs> right. right. Um, well, if you were if you were going to give um, advice to uh, young men and women who are struggling, mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds like you. Uh, were a person who just let these happenings come to you as they came and that you were open to uh, the experiences as they presented themselves. But uh, for some of these young people, they may have challenges such that they're not accepted at home, mm -hmm. that they have uh, challenges at school, a lot of news reports about bullying going on. So if you were to give advice to young people who are looking at these types of transitions, but it might be a little bit more trying or challenging for them, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? Well, I mean, honestly, I would say besides the whole it gets better thing, because it really does, I would say that those are challenges that make you who you are. and. Um, I've chosen to not be a victim of those things because I certainly um, was physically assaulted in high school. Um, I was under the threat of not having somewhere to live. I did have to come out to my parents and I was raised in a Catholic family. The acceptance maybe is still kind of in the air. I would say in my family, uh -huh. um, but you know, I mean, I don't, I didn't choose to define myself by what somebody else thought of me, and um, I think that's probably what kept me going, is, you know, 
just being myself at all costs. Um, <laughs> and the bullying in the schools, I mean, it's horrible. It's horrible to not feel accepted, but at the same time, it's... Um, and, and I feel awful about what we did to other kids our age when we were in 7th and 8th grade. But, I mean, I think that's a normal part of yeah. just, you know, learning how to be in the world. Um, so... Heck, that could be bullying in your average corporate environment space. Oh, yeah, and there will I, be. I see there bullying will be. going on in college, you know, different personality <laughs> types that want to, uh, you know, express their uh, feelings. Or, or people's lack of communication right. skills. I mean, and it's even worse when you're a child because you have the programming of your parents, so you're operating from that set of information, you haven't really begun to know your own information. I mean, right. there are kids that have their own certain personalities from a young age and some that don't. But, um, you know, if you are really in fear of losing the affinity of people that would want you to be something other than who you are, I guess you have to just rationalize that that relationship is, is worth um, sacrificing yourself. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time <laughs> to talk with me today. It's always, it's always such a great experience, Elizabeth. I have a good time, time with you. Together. Yeah. And I hope that we'll have a chance to talk more.